Hey guys, 420 Scene here. Thank you so much for stopping by and hanging out with me. I hope everyone watching is having themselves a super fire, super fly stony day. Let me know what you're token on and where you're watching the video from. I always like to know. Be sure to drop that fat like, subscribe, and if you want access to all my secret, unlisted videos, get access to our super fire VIP Discord community, smoke sesh live streams, or if you want to get some one on one grow help, definitely check us out on Patreon. I'm going to have the link in the upper right hand corner over here. PSA, real quick, we have a new episode of Grow and Joe a week from Sunday on July 7th at 9 a.m. Eastern. I'm not sure if YouTube is going to push it out or not, so I'm just letting you guys know. So if you want to see some more hands-on stuff, don't miss out on any of the Grow and Joe episodes. Also, don't forget to follow us on both Instagram and Grow Diaries. My IG is 420.scene. I'm going to have it right on screen, right down below. And if you want to follow us along with our Grows, our Grow Diaries page is going to be in the pin message right down below in the comment section. You might have to expand the comment section just because I have a lot of stuff on there. All right, so let's get started. Question number one, Two-Tone asked, papers or glass? This one's really hard, but it depends on the situation. If I'm hanging out with a lot of people that I would just say papers because I like hotboxing a room and then leaving it and then coming back and the dank just be hitting you right out the doorway. But I do love my glass because one nice rip and I'm hella faded if the dank is good enough, of course. And for those of you that I hit up on Snap, I mean, I love making smoke videos and blowing super big clouds. So I like both papers and glass. If you had to hold my feet to the fire, I would pick glass over papers every time. Question number two, Case Swap the World asks, what is better than ocean forest to keep burning up my seedlings? And people thought I was crazy when I came out with that video a long time ago talking about you don't need to use ocean forest for seedlings. There's too much shit in it. And maybe 420 seems not so crazy after all, huh? No, but seriously, I've been saying it for years. I would not use ocean forest for seedlings. And I don't care how many people shout to the rooftops that they do it. I don't give a fuck about that. There's a reason why Fox Farm created a soil called Light Warrior. It's because it's meant for seedlings specifically. And you can either grab a bag of Light Warrior for your seedlings or you could just make it yourself. Just use ProMix or Happy Frog and throw in that 25% worm castings. And honestly, that's pretty much all Light Warrior is. Now, if you're trying to replace Ocean Forest, just make your own version of it. And I'm going to have my super soil schedule on screen, but you can use it. And this, in my opinion, is a much better version of Ocean Forest. You'll actually have some potassium in there as well, hence why the Langbionite's in there. It's a great recipe. I've been using it for a couple of my most recent runs, so definitely try it out. I actually had a few people on my VIP Patreon, I think it was Crispy Kush saying that he was using my soil recipe and it's a lot better than the stuff that he was using. I think he was using like Roots Organic or something. But seriously, try out that recipe, man. Question number three, Dylan Collette asked, on my second run, and each time I'm getting yellowing at the tips of the leaves. Both were in a four by four with a VS4000 light. First time I used general hydroponic nutrients. This time I'm using grow dots. What would be causing the yellow tip leaves? Now, without looking at your ladies, I can tell you that you most likely have nutrient burn. That's what the yellowing burnt tips are. Stuff like general hydroponics nutrient line, it's very concentrated and I know a lot of hydro runners love it, but they focus on PPMs. So it's very hard to not go overboard because that shit is just extremely easy to get nutrient burn with if you're not careful with it or if you're just trying to eye ball it. And I'm going to be honest, I don't know a crazy amount about grow dots. Honestly, I only use Scotty's recharge, but if you're trying to avoid the yellowing tips, I would try to focus more on the organic side of gardening because it's just a lot harder to get nutrient burn running organically. And I'm not going to sit here and tell you that it doesn't happen. Like if you're running organically, but yellowing tips is not what I would consider high priority. I mean, if it's just a little bit of burn on the tips, it's not really a big deal. And it's just your ladies telling you to kind of chill the fuck out with the nutrition a little bit. It. It's a warning from them. Now, if you're dead set on going with grow dots, I would do a little bit of research on it or watch somebody that uses grow dots or bro, dude, just hit up the dude grows. I mean, it's their shit, right? I feel like nobody would be better to ask than to ask Scotty. Question number four, Sheila asked, when is the best time to harvest your ladies? Me personally, I wait until the trikes are mostly milky white with a touch of amber. Now, if you see a few clear trikes, it's not a big deal. It is normal. But if I had to ratio it out, I would like it to be maybe 80% milky white white, 15% amber, and 5% clear. Now, when your trikes reach that ratio, they're done. Question number five, Casey Dill asks, what's the best drying process? Should I trim most of the leaves the night before harvest, or should I harvest and dry, then trim? Also, good humidity for drying, and how many days until I should check them to be dry? The way I do it is I'll chop, and then I'll hang the entire plant, and I'll make sure to keep my humidity between 50% and 60%. Now, preferably, I like to shoot between 55% and 60%, but if you're 
you're within the 50% and 60% range, you'll be perfectly fine. Now, usually if I'm drying around 60%. Like if I'm drying 60%, it takes about 11 to 14 days for them to be done. If your humidity is around 55%, it usually takes me maybe like nine to 12 days. And if you're drying at 50%, it's usually done in about maybe seven or eight days, give or take. Also make sure to have an oscillating fan when you're drying. So that way you get a nice even dry. Always shoot for about 60% because the longer dry, it's gonna be more flavorsome and a lot smoother in my opinion. Question number six, Don Baron asks, once flip the flower, when do you consider the beginning of flower? Also, once flip, when you turn up the lights to 100? As soon as I see the white hairs, they are automatically gonna be in the first day of flowering. That's when I start counting. I don't count flipping the light cycle because they're still in that transitional phase, which does not equate to them being in flower. Now, as far as the intensity going up to 100%, you can have them at 100% when you start flowering or even when you're in the vegetative stage. The light intensity, that's not what's important. Your PPFD, that's what's really important. Okay, that's not true, that's not true. Obviously, there's a fine line between your light distance and PPFD. You know, I mean, if your PPFD, like if you're shooting for like 600 PPFD or let's just say 700 PPFD, but that means your lights are gonna be 12 inches away, then obviously that's not good. So you wanna find that area where you have high PPFD, but at the same time, you have to kind of play around and adjust and see what your ladies like before they get to that, you know, light burn phase. As a good rule of thumb, I like to keep my PPFD between 550 and 650 for the first half of flowering, and then I'll turn it up to like 700, 800 PPFD around week four of flowering. Now, this also really depends on the light you're using because you have different wattage, you have different spectrum, so that, all that stuff takes into account. You gotta check the wavelength parameters. All that stuff is important. What I would do is download the Photone app on your phone, pay the $6 a month for the full spec LED, get a diffuser, I got mine for 26 bucks, I know sometimes it's gonna be 30 bucks, and change your Photone app settings in the upper right hand corner. There should be a gear on there. Now once you open that, switch to accessory from paper. Like if you're using a diffuser and it's set at paper, it's gonna fuck up your PPFD. You're not gonna get an accurate reading. And also make sure to clean your equipment. Like the camera on your phone, make sure to clean that. The diffuser, make sure you clean that. Because again, if it's not clean, if it's all smudged out, that's gonna give you a really inaccurate reading. Question number seven, Daniel Gould asked, does using silica affect your microbes with organics? I can't tell you if it does or it doesn't, but what I can tell you is after I use silica, my ladies seem to really love it and they perk up nicely and my growth is still really solid. It doesn't affect your nutrient uptake in my opinion and your microbes are responsible for your nutrient uptake. So that's really the best answer that I can give you. Question number eight, 85 blues man asked, is water wet? Uh, last I checked, it's pretty damn wet, yeah. Question number nine, Fiery asked, what's your take on DIY auto watering systems or do you prefer hand watering? I don't really like to rely on automation. Give me a watering can in one hand and a jug of water in the other hand. I'll throw that bitch up in the can and there we go. Let there be water, bro. Question number 10, Pool Boy asked about light leaks coming from the bottom vents of the tent. I hear a lot of them being an issue. If so, why are no companies revamping them? I honestly don't know what companies can do to revamp this issue. I think when someone is setting up the run, they should take into account that there could be light leaks. So it's always a good idea to dedicate a room or a certain space so that way you can just have your lights off. And let's just say you have something like a TV or a monitor in the distance and that's not gonna be enough light for it to do anything to your ladies. How do I know this? I've done it, okay? I've left my closet door open halfway in the last few runs and my wife and I, we would just be watching movies for the rest of the night. Now granted, the TV would be facing the opposite way of the closet, but there's still a little bit of light that would go in the closet, you know, from it bouncing off the walls, but it's not like direct light or anything. So that's why I could make that determination that it's not gonna do anything. And I, I don't care who disagrees with me. Like, I fucking done it, okay? <laughs> It's like that, bro. You know, it's really funny though. I was one of those people that were crazy when it comes to trying to avoid any kind of light leaks. And it is a good idea to be mindful of light leaks, but don't think that your room needs to be pitch black. Plus those companies, they can justify a solution to just close the vents at night and turn on your exhaust system. So that way you can still keep pushing air out. You know, that's what they're gonna tell you every time. There's nothing to revamp. There's nothing extra that I could even think of that they would be doing. So that's all the questions that we have time for today. And be sure to keep an eye on the community section section of the 420 Scene YouTube channel. Before we close out today's video, I wanna thank everyone on screen who's been supporting us on Patreon. And for only $11.99 a month, you get access to our VIP Discord community, a whole bunch of exclusive Grow and Smoke videos, one-on-one -on -one grow help, live streams, and a lot of other really cool stuff. So that's
that's something you're interested in, definitely check it out. I'm gonna have the link in the pin message right down below and it's gonna be at the beginning of the video as well. And to everyone else, be sure to smash that like button and subscribe. And most importantly, turn on the notification bell so you don't miss out on any of my future videos. And I hope everyone has a great rest of their day. And as always, stay safe. Peace.